Today we have a fifth Sunday. We have the fifth Sunday of the Blessed Month of Tut. And because there's a fifth Sunday, the church, in its wisdom, uh, gives us this contemplation to focus on. So typically what happens if we have a fifth Sunday, we reflect on uh, the miracle of the five loaves and the two fish because it's a, it's a, uh, a gospel of abundance. There's extra. Um, and so because we have an additional Sunday, typically in a the, in the Coptic month, we have four Sundays. In the gospel reading today, we hear a very well-known uh, miracle, which is often called the, me- the feeding of the 5,000. However, when we read this passage, we find that the Lord has done something more unlikely and impossible than just feed 5,000 people. And there's different contemplations on the exact number. From one point of view, only God creates. We humans don't create. We refashion. We take things like sand and we transform them into glass. And then we take that glass and we turn them into windows and things like that. But God is the only true creator because he brings things from nothingness into being. He takes what did not exist and gives it existence. He gives it reality. We are told in the book of Genesis that God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning. And This means that there was a time when nothing but God existed. And we reflect on this in our liturgy. We say, O God, the great, the eternal. We also say, O you, the being, master, Lord God of truth, being before the ages. We say, the one who created the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is therein. So I want you to reflect on this gospel passage within this context. We see a very significant miracle that happens. The feeding of the thousands through five loaves and two fish, humanly speaking, scientifically speaking, it's impossible. But God is creator. We can apply this in our lives in many ways, this concept, this context. One way we can think about it is the way that we struggle against our own sin. There are days that we feel like We feel rotten. I'm I'm speaking for myself. We feel miserable, like miserable people because of our sins. And there are days that we feel like we failed others or that we can never get better, that we're stuck in this cycle. But I have good news for you. When you feel like nothing, God can use you and create through you. It's one of the reasons why we have to grow in humility When I'm humble, when I'm broken, I believe in my utter dependence on God. And God can take that nothingness and create. So how can, we have to reflect, how can we create virtue when none exists? How can we create wisdom within ourselves? The answer is we can't, but he can. He can. My own virtues and my own skills are limited. There are so many problems in the world, and my own personal skills and talents, sometimes they don't seem to help. Sometimes I feel like I'm the disciples with five loaves and two fish. I'm nearly empty-handed. The problems are too big. How can I help those around me? But we know something that the disciples couldn't recognize. The one who supplies all things is with us. He is the one who knows what the exact problem is and how to exactly address the problem. Human logic tells us that certain things are impossible. But God defies these odds on a regular basis. Multiplying bread and fish is amazing. But for the creator of the heavens and the earth and the whole universe, it's a very, very small thing. Oftentimes, We try to separate the things of God from the things of the world. We assume that God has no interest in whether we are sick or unhealthy in the body, for example. Or that God is not interested in our food or in our clothing or in our shelter and things like this. Nothing could be further from the truth. God cares deeply for our souls. And he does this without neglecting the material needs of the people. 
Each one of us has situations in our life that are like this. We find ourselves hungry. We find ourselves tired. We find ourselves lacking the things that we think are necessary for life. But the Lord reminds us that when He is present, that hunger and want are absent. And this is not strictly a physical matter of hunger and want, but even more importantly, a spiritual matter. We feel like we lack peace and we lack fulfillment and we lack, and we are sometimes tempted to seek out distractions. We want to seek out things that numb the pain. Or we may even seek to follow false gods that would tempt us by offering peace. They offer us happiness and contentment. On that day, when the Lord was teaching and healing the sick, the disciples had only five loaves and two small fish. There is no way that they could have possibly fed thousands of people with such a small amount of food. And yet even today, we look at our problems, we look at our limitations, and we allow these limitations to define us. We allow these limitations to define our situations. Yet God is not defined by our limitations. When we have faithful obedience, he reminds us that he is beyond limitation. He is the one who creates out of nothing. Regardless of the difficulties that we face and regardless of our own shortcomings, one thing is very clear. When we obey our Lord Jesus Christ, he will allow us to see wonders in our life. He alone has the power to give us good things, things that we truly desire in our hearts. He alone can multiply grace and spiritual blessings and the peace and joy that come with them. And what's asked of us in return? To simply obey, to sit at his feet, to be in his presence. I want to switch gears a little bit. For me, whenever we come across this passage, it amazes me of the love of God that is demonstrated through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who are we, who am I, that we should be treated with such care and such mercy that our Lord shows to the great multitude of people? His care for them is not superficial. He isn't worried about their appearance. He isn't worried about their health. He isn't he is worried about what is going on in their bodies and in their souls. The gospel about the five loaves and the two fish is a great reminder that God does not need much in order to accomplish his will. But one thing is that he requires of us is that we entrust everything to him. We don't hold back. The little boy could have given him four loaves and kept one for himself. Now we entrust everything to him. As the Lord seeks to feed the hungry people, the tired people, the disciples look at the small supply of food that's at hand. We only have five loaves and two fish. And how does our Lord, resp- how does our Lord respond? He says, bring them here to me. Bring them to me. Bring them here to me. It's as if our Lord was saying, in your hands, the five loaves and the two fish are, are, are scraps. But in my hands, it's a feast. The fact of the matter is that when we believe we are limited in everything we do, we're right. It's something called a self-defeating prophecy. And we have to be careful of this temptation and sin. We limit ourselves because we don't believe that God is God. Because we don't actually think that he is watching over us. That he loves us. That he wants the best for us. We have to contemplate. Is it a question for ourselves? Is it because we are afraid to give him control over our lives? Because we're afraid of what that means. I pray that we are not faithless. But instead that we are people of faith. The loaves and the fish in the disciples' hand 
could barely even feed a small family. But in the hands of the master, it became a feast that fed thousands of people with 12 baskets left over. 12 is no coincidence, right? It's a sign to the disciples who were 12 in number. The disciples who had worried about how to even feed the masses. Now each one of them had a basket of leftovers. Tasting the gifts of God and choosing to follow him and seeing the results. Each one of us has things that we would like to do and accomplish in our lives. And we are very limited in our talents and our abilities. But our Lord Jesus Christ gives us a way to multiply what is good in each one of us. Bring those gifts. Bring those gifts and those talents and those weaknesses. Bring those things to him. Even the best of our abilities are scraps in our hands, but they're made wonderful in his hands. We start with prayer. We say things like, Lord, I'm a simple person. I have very little to offer to anyone else. I can barely take care of myself. But I offer my life to you, and I ask you to bless this simple offering for the glory of your holy name. God can't refuse this prayer. He can't ignore this prayer because it, God loves a humble prayer. We see an example of this with Moses, who stuttered. And yet he was chosen to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Once his life was offered to God, once he completely trusted in God, there was not much that Moses couldn't do. He became a blessing to his family. And he became a blessing to all the people of Israel. We're given a choice each and every day. We can choose to let faith or the lack of faith dictate our lives. We can choose to be known by our strengths and weaknesses, or we can choose to be known by the one whom we serve. Our Lord Jesus Christ has done and will continue to do miracles in our lives and in our church. And he does this when we first put everything in, his, in its rightful place, which is in his loving hands. He doesn't need us to be saints before he can use us. I'm going to repeat that one more time. He doesn't need us to be saints before he can use us. He doesn't wait for us to have a multitude of gifts and talents before we become useful. Whoever you are, no matter your age, no matter your size, your strength, no matter your weakness, God can use you in ways that you could never imagine. God can take your, your meager offerings, your talents, your gifts, your resources, and if you lay them humbly at his feet, at his service, he can multiply them in a miraculous way. Isn't that exactly what he did with his disciples? There is not much good that can come from obsessing over our limitations. The Lord doesn't need you to be perfect. He needs you to struggle. The Lord himself will perfect you. But bring your sins and your weaknesses so that God can heal them. Bring them in prayer. Bring them to the altar. Bring them to the priest in confession. Whatever God touches, he leaves changed by his grace. God doesn't need our abundance. In fact, he only worked the miracle when he realized what they were lacking. God doesn't need our abundance and he knows that we are poor. And he wants to be our abundance. The God we serve is faithful and generous and merciful. And he is long-suffering. May our Lord see our sicknesses and our hungers. May he have compassion on us as he did with the multitude. May he fill us with good things because he alone can satisfy. We pray that God will continue his work of creation within each one of us, in our hearts, and within this holy community. And glory be to God forever. Amen.